Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Artur Manukyan, and today I'm going, I'm going to present uh, my coil acceleration hammer capstone. So let's start. So you can see the outline. We will cover these points, uh, which I mentioned in here. So let's start from the types of automated hammers. Let's start from the pneumatic one. Uh, as you can see, I divided them into some, uh, I just take the, some of their characteristics. First, which I think that is, is important, is how versatile <laughs> is uh, the hammer. So the pneumatics are, bless you, highly versatile. Uh, they can be used for multiple purposes, <coughs> like, uh, uh, like hammering or breaking something. And uh, another point, which is I think is important, is the vibration level that uh, equipment causes, the, because it is handheld equipment, and due to that, if it has uh, some vibrations, your hands will get uh, tired soon. And how c the another point is how c uh, continuously you can use them. And in case of pneumatic, they are excellent for continuous use; no, they don't overheat or, or they don't have any problems with continuous use. Uh, another point is the requirements that a tool needs. So in case of pneumatic, it's the compressed air, which uh, looks like uh, other equipment, like a gallon, uh, which is connected to the hammer. And also another point I think which is important is how powerful is the hammer. Uh, so you can see here it's, uh, it is high power to weight. It has high power to weight ratio and it is very powerful. So the next type is the electrical hammer, which are moderately versatile, which means they can be used for different cases, but they are not versatile as the pneumatic ones. Uh, they have moderate vibrations. They can overheat, which makes them not quite good for continuous uh, use, and they need some brakes. Uh, also, they need a power source, like socket or something like that. Uh, and also, they're not as powerful as pneumatic ones, but they still have moderate to power to weight ratio. Another one is the hydraulic, which are versatile mostly for heavy duty applications, like destroying a concrete wall, for example, but not for hammering, but still, it is a hammer. They have low vibrations, so that it means that it will be easy to use them. They're perfect for continuous use, so they can be used for different. Uh, they can be used for a uh, long time. Uh, they depend on the hydraulic sources, uh, which is not quite good because you will have another additional uh, equipment which will restrict your movement. And they're extremely powerful. And that's why I choose to use the electric hammer. Oh, we have another one, I'm sorry. We have also rotary hammers, which are highly versatile. They can be used for uh, hammering, for drilling, or other stuff. Uh, they have moderate uh, to high vibration, depending on the model. And uh, they uh, need to sometimes cooling due to their construction. Uh, they require almost nothing but uh, electricity. And also they have high impact entry. And that's why I choose to use the electric hammers, because they don't need any other equipment. And also, it is highly good uh, that they use only electricity, because they can be used in, for example, uh, vacuum, which can be really uh, beneficial for if you use in a uh, space where there is no air and uh, they're more safer. So the description will look like this. It, uh, it will be a hammer that works from 220 volt AC. It does not require any air compressor or hydraulic equipment. Uh, and also there it should be easy to use and no additional forces should be required. So you should not hammer with the electric hammer by your hand. So here's the some system specifications. I used some copper spools for the to in order to move the uh, head of the hammer. Uh, it was 0 0.5 uh, coated copper wires, which were uh, which I made uh, coils. Uh, also, I used some capacitors to store energy, which then will be discharged to the capacitors and create enough energy to pull the head of the hammer or to push it. Uh, for the control, I used a uh, microcontroller Atmega 328P, which was in, on Arduino Nano. It will control everything. It will allow us to change modes, to uh, control the time, how long should hammer uh, hammering. And for the power part, I use the Triax BTA41600, uh, which will act as a switch for the capacitors and the coil. 
uh, for in order to isolate the Arduino from the uh, high voltage, uh, I used uh, MOTS uh, 3043M photocouplers, which will as isolate, as I already said, microcontroller from the high voltage uh, and not burn it. Uh, also, I used some PNP and NPN transistors, exactly KSA 1015 and uh, RN1202, which will be used in the transistor K in order to uh, open the photocoupler. So, uh, here's some specification of this. Uh, I choose BTA41600 uh, due to its repetitive peak of state car per voltage, which can withstand up to 600 volts, and also RM RMS on state current, which was uh, 40 amps. But uh, for non repeated peak on state current, you can see that it is quite higher amps. That's why I chose it. Another part is MODS 3043M. Uh, I use that in order for the isolation and uh, I choose it because the input forward voltage was quite low with the 30 milliamps of current, forward current, and we can see that it holds continu uh, continuous forward current up to 660 milliamps and the uh, off-state output terminal voltage is 400 volts, which, can, which means it can work on the uh, high voltage part up to 400 volts, which is ideal for our case. And Arduino, I used it because it was cheap and also had four digital pins and uh, it's 14 should be, I'm sorry, that's my mistake. 14 digital pins and eight analog pins. And it also it's cheap. So, and also I used uh, some software, so it works for 3D modeling, Arduino ID, for programming the Arduino CS Edupack for the material choice, which is quite important in our case, and easy day for drawing schematics. Okay, so here is the schematic. We will go through the, all the parts separately. Let's start from the Arduino circuitry. As you can see, our system will have uh, two uh, patterns, one will actuate the uh, hammer and one will uh, change the mode. And we have three LEDs for the indication, two for the mode and uh, one for if we're ready or not to hammer. Also, we have some uh, connections for, uh, to voltage dividers, which I will go later, and also to the high voltage part. So, here's the best part of the schematics. I don't know why it is cut. It should be not like that. Uh, so you can see that uh, I used mods uh, for the isolating the Arduino. The cup two and cup one, coil one, coil two, are going straight to the, not straight, but uh, to the low voltage part, which where is Arduino and all other stuff. And as you can see, the mods is switching the BTA41 600BRG. Uh, there is some resistors which are necessary for this uh, triac to operate uh, well. And also there are connections for uh, coils, which you can see here on the cap forward and cap backward, and coil forward, coil backward, which should be here. Okay. And also here's the uh, coupler control unit. The Arduino itself was unable to turn on the mod 3043 uh, for some reason. And that's why I use the transistor key, which is using NPN and PNP transistor. Here you can see BCR29S, which is equivalent to the uh, our tra transistor. And uh, I use also some resistors for the uh, correct working. And here's the voltage measurement circuit. As you can see, uh, in order to measure our capacitors, whether charged or not, I used voltage dividers. And at the R10 and R12, there are 4.4 volts if the capacitor is charged or not. And we can measure that with the Arduino. And also we have some uh, full bridge rectifier circuit in order to convert 220 volts AC into 320 volts DC, which will be used later for our coils. So, the program for the Arduino, you can see here, we start, we first we're starting charging and when the capacitors are charged or not, we're checking if the buttons are pressed. And uh, later we stop charging when the, when the button are, uh, uh, is pressed and switch uh, the capacitor retract mechanism so the, uh, so the coil will do something, so the hammer will work like this. And then uh, when the when the capacitor of uh, retract is discharged, we switch the capacitor which uh, acts as a heating mechanism. So it will do also like this. So after that, we are changing if the capacitor that uh, allowed our uh, heat is discharged or not. And then we start our uh, process again. So here is the sum of the designs. This is the design you can see here. This is a prototype. 
and here you can see the coils and the uh, place where they where, we, where you put the coils and also head of the hammer. Here are them separately. The coils were made from the copper and the plastic part. We, we, I decided to use PLA because it is better for some heavy duty work and it's quite tough. And for the head I used hammer which because due to its uh, weight and also to its uh, magnetic permeability. Uh, and here is the, the uh, product, which should be look like which should look like this. In the yellow part, there should be capacitors. You can see two coils, heads, and the red one is the button, and the green one is the old circuitry, which should be fit there quite well. And here is the sum of the uh, drawings that I've made for these uh, coils. And here is the head of the hammer. It is uh, not so much heavy, but it's two three hundred grams. Which is oh, which is quite cool. Here you can see some demonstration of how the circuits uh, is working. You can see how coils attract the metal head, and it breaks itself. At that moment, it was breaking itself. <laughs> yeah, but here you can see the better part. Here is the whole uh, demonstration. Here, so this is the prototype of the hammer, which I used for which I made. So it's a prototype. It's not the final design. And you can see here how it works. Here is the, uh, you can see I'm pushing the button. It pulls the head of the hammer back and then strikes it at full power. Uh, I wanted to show you here, but unfortunately I blew up the circuit due to uh, tin in my circuitry, which was here, and it blew up, unfortunately. Some future upgrades that I want to uh, have uh, is the adjustable strength, so we can hit with the variable strength. Sorry. With, uh, with the adjustable strength and make a version for, for 110 volts AC because this one works only from 220 volts AC and uh, 110 volts will not work on this one. Some appreciation list. I would like to appreciate uh, Bilor Kurhinyan for uh, helping me. Unfortunately, he's not here. <laughs> but shit! <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Ah, oh, shit. That's so embarrassing. Okay. Uh, I would like to thank Bilor Kurgenyan for being my advisor. And I would like to thank my Tadevos Manukyan, a person in the middle, which helped me for the, my capstone, which, who was my, my supervisor, not only for this capstone, but during all my life. Also, I would like to thank Arayk Zakan, which is not here, unfortunately. He wasn't able to come here today, uh, which helped me a lot with the circuitry and all the stuff. Some additional appreciation. I would like to thank you, Dr. Harachakuchan, for providing CES EduPak, which helped a lot with the material choice. Professor Sarki Zaytunyan, thank you for all the things that you've done, CAD and engineering statics. Thanks for all the things. Ms. Satink Maktakayan, of course, thank you for uh, four years full of interesting stuff. Mr. Miriam Gurunyan for helping with circuits. And Alexander for being a great TA. Thank you. Yes, uh, those four capacitors. Sorry? You have the four big capacitors. Yeah, I use four uh, how, if you add them together, how many uh, uh, farads? Approximately 2,000 2, microfarads if we add um, them all. But one uh, is for the retraction mechanism and three other for the heat. Charging. Yeah, the charging. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, the second question is, you know when you have a, a hammer, yep. like when you hit it, you know when it's going to hit. Yeah. Does it take practice to have a something that's like a gun? Yeah. Because it's not the same feeling. Yeah, it needs a practice, of course. But uh, if you're hammering like uh, tw 20 nails or something like that in a day or more, for example, it just would be better to use something that automotive like no, rather no, than I'm with hands. I'm not arguing. I'm just saying ah. I'm just trying to think myself. If I have this, we all know what it feels like. Yeah, yeah. But when you go like this, it's... Uh, well, we can say some same about the drill also. Train. Okay, thank you. Train. Thank you for question. I have a question from your thesis. Okay. Uh, I actually read some of some of these uh, theses. Yeah. So in the thesis on page nine, you say according to formula 1018 from elementary mechanics using Python, then you put the kinetic energy formula. Kinetic energy equals one half mv squared. Go through the process of saying 
half a kilogram at 10 meters per second, and then you say you need 25 uh, newtons of kinetic force. Yeah. Can you walk me through how you got from something that has a units of joules to a units of force? Because force is rate of change of momentum, and that's energy. So are you providing 25 joules of energy, or are you providing 25 newtons of force? 25 newtons of force. So I guess you, I need you to walk me through it. OK. So now? No, 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 later. <laughs> maybe, maybe I did something wrong, OK. <laughs> Okay, just a, a, a quick question about the design. Yeah. If you if you hold it like this and it, sh it I don't know how you call it, it shoots, right? Yeah, it's it hits. will it will create a rotation momentum, right? So it mm, will. Well, during testings there was no rotation. I don't know. Okay, maybe it's not so maybe powerful, it but maybe if you're yeah, it's not so powerful. Trying to make it powerful, maybe this kind of uh, I don't know, I'd call it like holding mechanism is not the most practical yeah. one. Yeah. Maybe you should have two on both sides or have like something on the center on oh the, yeah, the axis. Something like this. Or something, um, something like, like that. Moment of symmetry. I agree. Thank you. Thank you.